Hey everyone, this is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology, and today we are going to preview some of the unique features of our upcoming new moon in Gemini. Um, I don't always take time out to look at new moons or full moons. I tend to do so, however, when there are features of the newer full moon that really stand out. Of course, I always cover eclipses. But, um, you know, newer full moons, they can be hit or miss in terms of how powerful the exact day will be, as opposed to, say, the themes of the entire cycle that are implicated by the transit, the major transits happening during the cycle, which is what I tend to focus on on my channel. At any rate, this new moon over the, coming over the weekend um, has some really unique features that I thought would make for uh, a good video today. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at the new moon in Gemini and five things that stand out about this new moon, in my opinion, including maybe the biggest thing, which is that this new moon is happening in a square with Neptune and Pisces. We're going to take a look at the Sun-Neptune combination archetypally tomorrow. So uh, we'll do a lot more, a, a much deeper dive into the Sun-Neptune archetypal combination tomorrow. Today, we're going to look a little bit more at what this cycle is likely to feature over the next month, given some of the big signatures, which will include Sun Neptune, but will not be limited to it. So we'll kind of cover that one more specifically tomorrow. Before we get into it, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, you're uh, subscribing helps the channel to grow. And if you're here and watching regularly, liking helps the channel to grow. Sharing your comments and your own insights and reflections also helps the channel to grow uh, quite a bit. So we really appreciate that when you guys do it. You can find a transcript of today's talk on the website, which is nightlightastrology.com. If you go over to the website, nightlightastrology.com, be sure to also check out my readings and courses. Uh, if you have any questions about them, we've had some new courses that started recently. It's not too late to join them. Uh, so check them out, especially the first year course. Uh, that one started on June 11th. So any questions about anything you find on the website, including our readings and courses, email us info at nightlightastrology.com. Okay, let's take a look at the real time clock. And I want to just point out some of the features of this, um, of the new moon. Let's see, here we go. I'm always like, will we have the, the big circle appearing? All right, not today. So um, here is the new moon coming through in Gemini. Uh, Saturday evening, June 17th. So it's coming in over the weekend. Like I said, tomorrow we'll look at the fact that the sun will be squaring Neptune over the weekend on Father's Day, no less. Uh, so that should be, um, like again, more of a deep dive into the sun Neptune. But today what we want to look at is this new moon in Gemini coming through on Saturday evening and what to expect from it. Um, so there are, basically there are five features that I think are really important. By the way, technically speaking, depending on which time zone you are in, uh, this new moon may come through on the 18th, like on the East Coast, for example, um, and uh, the West Coast may get it on the 17th. So I have June 18th new moon in Gemini, but it's 17th, 18th, depending on time zone. All right. So there are uh, five special features of this new moon in Gemini that I want to talk about, and I'm actually going to keep the chart up so that I can point them out. Um, so the first thing that I think is really interesting about this is that this new moon is in Gemini and featured by Mercury, who has just appeared as the morning star. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. I'm going to, in order to do that, I'm going to eliminate uh, everything from our point of view, except for the sun, uh, Mercury, and the moon here. So... What we mean when we say this is that you can see here, for example, on the eastern horizon, let's just say this is the eastern horizon cutting through the first house somewhere, which is usually what we call our ascending degree or the ascendant. Mercury is going to be coming up prior to the sun. And when you get that... Uh, rising prior to the sun and about 15 degrees of separation from the sun approximately, that's when Mercury emerges from underneath the light of the sun or the beams of the sun and appears, makes its appearance. So this morning star appearance is considered to be a very auspicious and powerful omen. And it puts Mercury into a very strong position. Uh, Mercury becomes very um, solar or masculine or yang like Mercury is also in its own domicile in the sign of Gemini. And so this new moon is, because if you look at the number of degrees uh, separating, you'll see that it is, um, you're, you're looking at a, a about 15 degrees. So um, 
you have about, I think it's about 14 here that's separating. So within a very close prox within very close proximity, let's see if we go forward just a little bit more, you can see how close that, and actually it's like right about here that it happened. So it's a little, it's almost like yeah, just having appeared as the morning star a little bit earlier this week, I believe actually, but it's right there. It's, it's happening at the exact same time or right around the same time that this new moon is coming through. That's the basic point. So what does that mean and why, why is that, you know, important? Um, and I'm going to plug everything back in so that I have it ready to go when we look at the chart again. The main reason that this is so important is that when you have the host of a new moon in its own domicile, just appearing as the morning star like Mercury is, you have a, a moon cycle that is uh, toned by an incredibly powerful airy Mercury. So that gives you a feel for what the fruits of the cycle are likely to be. You're going to have a very airy, mercurial, um, and sort of mental, rational, philosophical, uh, technological cycle. It's a great cycle. When you see something like that, you know that wherever that whole sign house of Gemini is in your birth chart, for starters, is going to be speaking pretty loudly uh, in the month ahead. So if you have that in your career house, things are going to be pretty busy in that area or the financial house or the relationship house or the house of home and family or the house of body, health and identity, the first house, you know, so you kind of get a feel for where Gemini is located by whole sign in your chart to know like this is going to be a very busy and vocal cycle. When, when Mercury or Venus appears as the morning star for ancient astrologers, one of the words that's sometimes used to describe a planet becoming moving into that position is uh, that it, it becomes loud. It becomes vocal. It's like it has a megaphone. And not only that, but then when you put a planet in its own domicile, it amplifies that effect of the planet being sort of strong and its voice being loud in the unfolding of fate or destiny in the cycle ahead. So it's a very airy cycle. It's a very mercurial cycle. It's a strong Mercury and it's a morning star Mercury. Morning star Mercuries tend to appear with sort of brilliant, dazzling, youthful enthusiasm, new ideas, new initiatives and incentives. Um, this kind of Mercury can solve problems, implement new ideas, work with technology, uh, handle a variety of, you know, juggle a bunch of balls in the air at the same time. Uh, Mercury's good at multitasking. Uh, Mercury's conversational and communicative. It can be cooking a lot of things on a lot of different burners simultaneously. And it's going to do so pretty effectively while being in its own sign um, and being a morning star. So in terms of the the maybe maybe the one of the most interesting features of the cycle is the fact that this is a Gemini moon new moon cycle ruled by Mercury, who is in its own sign at the start of the cycle and just having appeared as the morning star, giving it a lot of oomph. So for that reason, you got all of these mercurial airy things being really dominant for the cycle ahead. And you can get a feel for that again if you look at the starting point of the topics of the whole sign house of Gemini in your birth chart. Anyway, number two, and this I find, um, you know, maybe equally as fascinating, though I did put these in order in terms of the things that I think are sort of most fascinating. Usually I don't put things in order of most importance. I just sort of list them randomly. But this one is in order of importance. I think that's probably the most important feature of the cycle. Uh, but I, this one to me is sort of, it's like 1A. It's part of the, the uh, story because context is everything in astrology. And the context of this cycle, let's uh, let's actually move this one day ahead so we get that new moon in the actual picture here. I'm going to, here we go. Now we've got the picture of the new moon pretty nicely situated. And here's what I also find fascinating. Mercury, in the, in the context of appearing as the morning star, Mercury has also just passed through a square to Saturn. So in just passing through a square to to Saturn, Saturn is also stationed. You can see the little S above Saturn. So that means Saturn is turning retrograde. That tends to happen, by the way, just as soon as the sun comes into a trine with Saturn, that it will station to turn uh, retrograde or station to turn direct. Uh, so in this case, um, the sun is, um, 
the sun is um, moving into the trine with Saturn and Saturn is in the, um, here, we'll just show you this. This will be easier if I just, I'll just draw it out. So you can see Saturn, the sun is about to move into Cancer, the water sign where it will make the trine to Saturn. And notice what's happening right as it's about to do so. Oops, let me do this, here we go. So you can see that the sun is coming into that trine and it's happening just as Saturn turns retrograde. So the, the retrogradation, the, the station happens and then Saturn is retrograde. And then very shortly after the sun goes into Cancer and makes the whole sign and the degree base trine to Saturn. So that connection of the sun to Saturn in a trine is always what happens right around the time that Saturn is either stationing to turn um, direct or retrograde. Uh, so interesting thing to notice. But the point of this is actually, let's go back to our, here we go. So in this case, what's so interesting is that Mercury, as the morning star, has just passed through a square to Saturn, and Saturn is now turning retrograde. So there has been an encounter in the, almost like the backdrop of this cycle, features an encounter between airy Mercury and watery Saturn, which is fascinating because the sun and moon, and this is point number three, which I'll bring up in a second, are also in an air sign squaring Neptune in a water sign. So there is a, um, a really interesting way in which the Mercury-Saturn square passing over represents something of um, Mercury coming to, I would say, figure something out that has maybe uh, been something of a block or a limitation, and especially on the level of mental and emotional processing. So we think of that because Mercury will represent mental uh, and cognitive and intellectual and communicative dimensions of our lives. Whereas Saturn and Pisces, when you combine it with Mercury, will add that uh, emotional, psychological, and spiritual dimension and the heaviness or weight or frustrations or blocks or limitations that we feel uh, mentally and emotionally are represented by the square between Mercury and Saturn. And so this cycle has that in the backdrop, but Mercury is having passed over that square now. So there's something about this cycle that is almost representative of trying to put something behind us, trying to uh, rise up and gain some maybe mental and emotional confidence after having recently uh, been faced with various limitations, struggles, or setbacks, or grief, or um, just the, the feeling of being closed in and less free mentally or emotionally. So to me, what's so interesting is the sat this cycle then seems to, it seems to speak to the idea that things are trying to loosen up or free themselves up, especially mentally and emotionally. Uh, that there's maybe the continued facing of some limitations or blocks or the marriage of the mind and the emotional bodies, uh, the mental and emotional bodies as a part of the cycle, but there's something about overcoming the duality between mind and emotion, that they don't need to be enemies, they can get along somehow. So I see that in the backdrop, and I see that reiterated by the fact that this new moon, and this two and three could really be the same point. Um, number three is that this new moon is in a very tight square with Neptune in Pisces. Now tomorrow, we're going to look at the sun square Neptune in depth. But for now, what I'll say is that this cycle is also trying to marry something of the imaginative, the romantic, the emotional, the psychological, the subjective, the relational, the interconnected uh, web of creation and, and like the ecology of our emotions and the things that they connect us to in the environment and world around us. And th though that dimension of life is also tr is trying to connect with that Gemini space, which has to do with you know, our intelligence, our wit, our street smarts, our, our mind, our speech, our communication, our ability to learn and think uh, creatively, independently, to be adaptive mentally. So once again, we see like Mercury passing over Saturn, that this cycle uh, offers us the opportunity for some kind of marriage between mind and emotion, between uh, the mental cognitive and the imaginative romantic dimensions of life. This could mean that we also are facing, um, you know, uh, qu questions or issues around boundaries. 
This would be a, a cycle that could feature, you know, saying too much or gossiping or lacking appropriate mental and emotional boundaries and having to learn more about how to keep or maintain those healthy boundaries. This could also be about the difference between what is real and helpful and logical and, and like a clear, rational way of moving through problems versus ones that are grandiose and, um, you know, you know, exaggerated, over the top, unrealistic kinds of um, uh, unrealistic ways of seeing things or of dealing with whatever is in front of us. Uh, but I, I like to think that this cycle could also feature um, really creative marriages between the intuitive and the rational. It's like, you know, putting uh, the two spheres of our brain together and saying, you know, let's, let's get along here. Let's come up with a holistic solution. So the potential for the integration of mind and spirit or of intuition, um, the, the, the qualities of like, you know, psychic awareness, the dream space, um, subtle synchronicities, all of that world of Neptune coming into contact with the, you know, the, the, the magic and um, creativity of, of the mental space that Gemini represents could, you know, it could really be fantastic to see the two coming together during the cycle. So let's hold that out as a, as an uplifting possibility. But that comes through on the new moon as well. Now, this leads me to point number four, which is more broadly speaking about the combination of air and water. We have three, four, five planets total combining around this new moon in air and water, Saturn and Neptune and Pisces, Mercury, Sun and Moon and Gemini. So one of the things that I would just say about air and water is that they are very social. Water tends to pool together in terms of emotional affinities, things that bond and link us together on the level of the heart, the soul, uh, family, and groups, but where, where, you know, blood and water combine. There's a sense of belonging, uh, and, and, you know, water can be tribal in all of the best ways and maybe some of the not-so-great ways. Uh, the water can be about ancestry and DNA and genetics and, 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 and the past and those things that gather us together in emotional loyalties and bonds with other people. And then on the level of air, it's about ideology. It's about thought and opinion, and it's about how those things bond or link us to other people. Now, isn't it interesting that when you combine those things, you will sometimes have, you know, where ideology and emotion meet or clash. For example, you could be part of a group of people that you share a bond with, say family, but you have a family barbecue and you have to deal with your uncle whose views are very different from your own. And you have to try to stay open and receptive because you have an emotional loyalty to this person. But mentally or intellectually or you know, ideologically, you're, you're just screaming inside like you're so wrong. So the idea here is that the air and water has to do with the level of how the, the well, let's call it social cooperation, the sense of social belonging that comes from our minds, our beliefs, our ideas, what we like to learn and think about versus those bonds that are emotional in nature, that are physical in nature, that are very primal and maybe ancestral or uh, communal or familial somehow. So we think a lot about this moon cycle is also teaching us something about where ideas and um, thoughts and feelings uh, collect us or gather us with other people and where we might clash in some of these ways. And is there some space for reconciliation or, you know, uh, working out the, the kinks around emotional and intellectual uh, affiliations? Number five is that this uh, new moon also features a Mercury-Venus sextile. So the Mercury-Venus sextile uh, doesn't happen all the time because of how close the two planets stay to the sun, especially a degree-based sextile. So what I like about this is that in the air of this transit is the idea of loyalties and of the mind and the heart. You can think of Venus and Leo as the, the heart space, let's say. It says, like, how can I ultimately, behind this transit, the ruler of this, of this uh, new moon cycle, excuse me, is Mercury, who's, you know, in a sextile. Sextiles are of the nature of Venus. In a sextile with Venus saying, let's cooperate, let's harmonize. Mercury's moving past the square to Saturn where there might have been stricter or harsher limitations or rigid ways of thinking or feeling that separate us from other people. Now there's some sense of let's blend and merge. Let's bring mind and, and uh, body or mind and feeling together. Let's harmonize thought and feeling in, in, our, in our 
lives and in who they in who our thoughts and feelings bring us into cooperation or community with. So this it, it has the feeling of a cycle that is really about harmonizing on these different levels. So I thought that was a really neat feature to see that, hey, you know what, Mercury's sextile to Venus at the outset of the cycle. There's a cooperating, problem-solving, let's get together kind of feeling behind the new moon that I think is uh, really nice and a lot less dramatic in some ways than some of the previous cycles we've had in the start of the new year, which a lot of which were toned by like Saturn entering a new sign, Pluto entering a new sign, Jupiter entering a new sign, eclipses happening. So, you know, the, maybe the upside of this cycle is that it's like, hey, there's a little bit of tension in the air, you know, some water-air combinations that aren't totally easy, but you got Mercury in a great position, harmonizing with Venus, trying to work things out, uh, and a challenge between air and water to get along. So uh, that is where I will leave it for all of you to think about and also uh, leave your own reflections. And what is your what is your sense of things as we're coming into this? What are you feeling? What are you noticing? Uh, what do you anticipate from the cycle ahead? Or how can you already see maybe some of these things playing out with what you know is coming in the next couple of weeks? All right. Well, I will leave it there and we will be back tomorrow to take a deeper look at the sun square to Neptune, which is a big part of this new moon and take a, a, a real in-depth look at that archetypal combination, which should help us get ready for the new moon as well. All right. That's it for today. I hope you guys are having a great day and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.